Hello and welcome to Europa Universalist 4. I am Lord Font here doing a quick country guide on how to play the Papal State, also known as the Pope. Um, this is the feudal state that the popes located in Rome controlled, more along the line of a kingdom than what one would consider the traditional papacy today. Um, it was a little less spiritual a little bit more materialistic that's all i'm going to say on it i don't mean to be offensive to any catholics um so the papal state the pope i will probably be using them interchangeably is a is one of the very most unique forms of government in the game it's literally called the papacy um, you get one yearly prestige one tolerance the true faith plus one diplomat negative autonomy change etc um, and you get a ruler. Um, usually your rulers start out fairly old. I think the youngest I got was like 35, uh, which means they tend to die a lot. But luckily, it counts your form of government. The papacy counts as a theocracy, which means you don't lose stability upon ruler death. So that is important to remember that you can build up to three stability and stay at three stability for most of the game, barring random events or decisions you might take. Um, of course, that means since it's the Pope, and if you know anything about modern politics, the Pope is elected by the College of Cardinals, which means it is a non-hereditary, absolute theocracy, where the Pope rules with absolute power, but they're elected. Um, there's a lot of very interesting videos about the structure of the Catholic Church, um, which is essentially the papacy. Now, it's important to remember that despite everybody else in Europe, with the exceptions of, of course, the Muslims and the Orthodox, everybody is Catholic does not mean you actually have a great amount of control of them. In fact, I honestly think you should, be get, you should get a larger same religion modifier, but you don't. Um, on the other hand, it means everybody in the game will meddle with the Holy See, which is essentially the College of Cardinals, um, where you can get papal influence and buy things. However, you are the Pope, and you don't get those bonuses, which I think is very unfair. Instead, you gain Popple influence based off the total number of cardinals, which usually means you have, I think the lowest I've seen it is like a 25% chance of getting control of the next College of Cardinals session once a pope is elected. Um, that means you can usually get the Curia Controller benefit more often than other nations. And the Curia Controller benefits are huge. Uh, reduced ability costs, additional diplomat, yearly prestige, cheaper advisor costs, more possible advisors, tech costs, leaders without upkeep, aggressive expansion, in, uh, impact negative 20, which is the largest bonus, which if you play it right and somehow manage to maintain control of the Holy See, um, you can expand faster than I think pretty much every other nation in the game, possible exception being Rukuyu. Um, it also stacks with one of your national ideas, another aggressive expansion impact, negative 10%, and if you take influence, another negative 20, which means just from those three things, you're looking at negative 50% aggressive expansion cost. I will get back to that a bit later when I talk about prestige and how the government functions. Um, seeing as you are a theocracy, I'm going to go over the theocracy mechanics because most people don't play theocracy since there are very few of them and the majority of them are in the HRE and are tiny and people tend to not play them. Um, they're fun. Uh, you get, as a theocracy, you don't have legitimacy, instead what you have is devotion. And devotion is a wonderful mechanic, but I don't like the way it's implemented right now. Essentially, a sliding value from 0 to 100, every year you lose 0.5% of it. The higher it is, it can give you up to 25 additional, additional tax from all your provinces, plus one prestige, plus one yearly popple influence, which of course is useless for you. Um, but the yearly prestige and the additional tax modifier are huge. It means that you can make a lot more money from a single province than any other nation in the game. It also stacks wonderfully with your popple idea, which gives you an additional 20% tax modifier from one of them. Uh, very useful. Uh, you can get, and this is important to note, it does change the religious ideas. If you see this one called Devoutness, this will give you yearly devotion plus 0.5, which means if you take religious ideas and you take that yearly devotion, your devotion value 
if you play it right, will never fall to zero. It'll usually stay at 100 or thereabouts. So quickly running through the popple ideas, you get an additional diplomatic reputation because you're the Pope and you should be friends with everybody, all the other Christians. I honestly wish there was kind of a way because some of the other nations in the world wouldn't really care about it, but it's to lend the fact that the Pope had a lot of diplomatic influence. I think it should be higher personally. You also get religious unity plus 25%, which isn't useful early on because the Pope, you know, you're up Catholic. You're all Catholic. Uh, it does help a bit with the Protestant and the Reformed faiths when they emerge, or if you expand in the Orthodox territory. It just lends the image of this is essentially the Catholic Church. They're not going to have a lot of other faith rebellions within a, a legitimately country that is defined by being Catholic. Um, it also means you cannot switch to any of the other faiths from what I have found, um, which is very difficult. Um, on the other hand, your next idea is plus two tolerance of the true faith, which is really handy because being Catholic, you already have one of the highest tolerances of the true faith. Plus you get one from the Pope, which means just starting off with that idea and your other bonuses, you've got plus 8% tolerance of the true faith in the majority of your provinces, which is huge. If you take the religious idea, you'll end up with another tolerance of the true faith, or oh, I think nine. Uh, which means you can pretty much just march and take over Catholic provinces and there won't be a large amount of rebellion in them. It allows you to not raise autonomy when you conquer lands as much. It is quite a very useful thing, and I advise you to stack as much tolerance to the true faith as possible. Your next one is plus 20% tax, which I think, and I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure I'm not, it is the largest tax modifier in the game. Um, it is huge. It's about equivalent to taking war taxes in some ways, <laughs> um, except that you don't need to, and it stacks on top of your devoteness for a total of 45% more tax from a base province. Um, you also have yearly one prestige, which is lovely, especially when you consider that, assuming you take religious ideas, which you should, you'll get a yearly prestige from that. And another popular idea is negative one yearly prestige decay. Um, plus you're the Papacy, plus you get one, plus you get one from Devoteness, and if you control the Curia, you get another. Essentially what it means is once you hit Glory of Rome, and if you finish Religious Ideas or not, by the time you hit the Vatican Museum, your Prestige should be sitting at 100, your Devotion should be sitting at 100, which means if you're up at Prestige, you can get an additional, if you look down that list, Aggressive Expansion, I believe it goes up to negative 10% means you can get negative 60% aggressive expansion, you get a 10% trade power, you get five, I think it's, it's either five or 10% morale of armies, navies, essentially all those bonuses go up by four times what they are currently, um, which is huge. It's one of those hidden mechanics, not a lot of people mess around with prestige, but if you can get it sitting at a permanent high level, the benefits are equivalent to pretty much a whole idea tree. It's amazing. Um, and definitely worth doing on it. Next one is Donation of Constantine, which allows you to fabricate claims cheaper. Used to be much better when it was time to fabricate claims rather than uh, just the base cost, but it's useful. Um, I think it should be either higher, lower, or changed, but that's my personal preference. Uh, production efficiency plus 10%, again, making what few provinces you have that much more productive and valuable. The negative one prestige decay just is going to help you get your prestige even higher. And then you've got the aggressive expansion, negative 10%. And then when you finish all the ideas, you get plus five discipline, which if you notice at all, that is the only military idea the Pope gets. However, and this is very important to notice, the Pope gets several major events on this area of being the Pope. You get modifiers like painting the Sistine Chapel, you can get stuff like the Swiss Guard. In fact, the Papal history has very wealthy um, lands and a rich history for stuff to go along with it. Um, it's absolutely wonderful. One of the best events in the game is called the Vatican Library. It will fire if you've got the common sense and you get a choice. You can do uh, you can focus the library on administrative, diplomatic, or military arts with different bonuses thereon. If you take military, you'll get additional 
discipline and something else. And it's really useful. Um, it means the Pope actually gets quite a lot of events that give them prestige and military power. In fact, the biggest danger as the Pope is having too much <laughs> prestige. Uh, you'll get events like decorating the Sistine Chapel, where you'll get like modifiers that last for a period of time, and you'll already be at 100 prestige. In fact, you get events like indulgences, which is one of the few ways that as a Catholic nation, you can actually lower the reform desire of the faith. You get a choice to sell indulgences or not. If you don't sell indulgences, you'll lose stability, but you'll also lower Catholicism's reform desire by 10%, which will delay the Protestant and Reformed Reformations that much longer. Uh, if you do accept it, you get a permanent modifier to your income. In practice, I usually don't. You also get another one's like venerations of relics which is essentially the same event and on and on you'll also get galileo you'll get you'll get a choice to condemn slavery and stuff on and on and on and on now you get a lot of events interacting with mm, other religions uh, specifically the catholics and the protestants but it's pretty easy to over deal with it all. In fact, the only real danger you'll have from Catholicism or Protestantism is if it spreads to your lands because you're so intolerant of them from being the Catholic and you automatically start with the Blasphemy Act first already passed that uh, a single Protestant province within your land will pretty much indefinitely be rebellious unless you've immediately just crushed a rebellion. Um, which is annoying. The irony is you're actually more tolerant of heathen beliefs than you are of heretic beliefs. On the other hand, having the Blasphemy Act already passed means that you've got stronger missionary strength uh, than any of the other starting Catholic nations, which means if you own a Muslim province native to missionary strength, you can actually convert them. One thing I had fun with once was I invaded North Africa early on, killed Tunis, and converted this whole region to Catholicism as the Pope, because um, I was able to convert from the beginning. And if you then go religious, get an additional missionary strength, converting all religions to Catholicism is really easy. Let's see, that is mostly a brief rundown of events, the government and stuff. Decision-wise, you've got a really unique decision called Clear Kingdom of God. Essentially, it wants you to control northern Italy, modern-day Italy. And then you can get advanced that passes it, which gives you 10% manpower, plus one prestige, plus one devotion. Essentially, this will compensate if you don't go down the religious tree and get that plus 0.5 yearly devotion to balance out your current devotion. I don't like this event. Um, it doesn't tell you, or at least doesn't tell me from what I can see here, but it disables the Holy See. And, I, and you do not get the benefits of being a Curia controller ever again, um, which is one of your stronger benefits towards being the Pope. It's a much greater chance of getting that. So uh, it's useful. It gives you permanent claim on a lot of this land. I think it gives you claims on all of this too. Uh, it can be useful. Um, you cannot form Italy, which is important to note, which is kind of sad because Italy is a really strong nation. But you've got much. You've almost got equivalent ideas in terms of administration. Obviously, you're weaker on the military front. Um, luckily, as the Pope, you start out with four lands in Italy plus one over here in Avignon. This is, of course, the result of the avid Uh, Piedmont to do Kingdom of God. So essentially any nation up here you'll be looking to destroy if you want to complete that. Um, it's really useful, um, but it takes a while to get that land owned and under your control because it's Italy, high development though. Once you take this land, you'll be equivalent to a great power such as France with 300 some odd development. Uh, plus your land will be richer. 
Uh, you'll be able to support a fairly good sized military. Essentially everything's going for you as the Pope. Uh, if you get all those aggressive expansion modifiers stacked, you can easily expand and conquer things very rapidly. Um, let's see, other than that, uh, there are a couple achievements for them, but they're not easy, so if you're going to do them, you probably already know how to do them. Other things, your estate management is interesting because um, you can have less land given to the clergy than one would expect, and uh, you still can get all the modifiers from the clergy, which means you can get another 20% tax modifier on top of the modifiers from devotion and being the papal states. Um, you can get a lot of wealth really quickly. The only thing you really don't have is trade, but obviously if you take over either the Genoa trade node or Genoa trade node or the Venetian trade node, you'll get a lot of money from trade regardless of what you do. Uh, in terms of expansion, you probably want to conquer most of northern Italy. Naples is a little harder to kill due to being under Aragon and then usually under Castile and then being part of Spain, but it's quite possible to conquer with the aid of France, Hungary, Austria, sometimes will assist you. As I said, invading North Africa can be fun because there's really no one there who can oppose you. If you get strong enough and you're crazy, you can try attacking the Ottomans, and if you can beat them, you can take all this land pretty easily. In terms of expanding outside of Italy, if you go north too much, you're attacking the HRE. In fact, the HRE is the reason you don't want to attack anybody in this region unless you join the HRE until they leave the emperor empire in 1490 which means you get about 45 years of peace likely to get the renaissance or get it really quickly uh, you do have a